the Walther P99 AS Final Edition. So this gun came out around 1997. For me, when I started getting into firearms, this was the definition of a Walther for me. This is, when you say Walther, this is what I thought of. And because of that, I've always had a soft spot in my heart for this particular gun. However, Walther saw fit to, de to decide to basically stop selling it. This is, so this is the final edition, this is it. This is it, after this, they'll stop making them. And then you'll have to go buy them on the gray market, like a weirdo. So there's that. But the one aspect about this gun that's really unique, the thing that stands out the most is, it looks like a striker fired firearm. Like you see, kind of generally speaking, today. However, this actually is a double action, single action with a decocker, which is interesting because it doesn't look like that. But if you look at the top of the slide, there's a decocker right here that when you push it down, it makes the trigger into freaking, there you go, double action, double action. Then you push the decocker, let's <laughs> say that 10 times fast. Then you rack it, and then the trigger does something interesting. You slap it back right there, that's your take up. And it just kind of sits there on its own. Then you get a nice single action pull, which is actually really far back, actually, when you think about it. So if I'm gonna rack it again, you get this, that's your take up, boom. You hear that click, and then it, all the way back here, boom. Not the biggest fan of that, at least under dry fire. Under real fire, it's not that bad. Um, also, another thing that makes the gun unique is this European style magazine release that all the Americans hate. Americans hate this. They really do. There are some weirdo Americans that, that love. What the is that? Hold on, let's go. What the? Who's shooting this wonderful noisemaker over here? That beautiful, sweet <laughs> music. Which bay is it? Excuse me. You're making a lot of noise here. Can I take a look? Before you finish watching this video, I want to thank today's sponsor. BulletSafe. BulletSafe is the maker of the VP3 Level 3A Bulletproof Vest, which is priced at an affordable $299. The VP3 is also made in the US and is NIJ certified, rated up to 44 Magnum protection, and is lightweight, concealable, and discreet. So, if you're on the market for some body armor, I put a link in the description section of this video. All the ammo used in this video was brought to you by Nosler. Literally, we were filming a video and I did a dead stop and I was like, what was that? We gotta find that noise. Yeah, nice to meet you. I've nice watched you a lot of your videos before. Oh, thanks, so. brother. What's the setup here? Yeah. <laughs> That's startup. When you hear it spinning, you're like, here. <laughs> and we're back. So, <sighs> all right, I'm coming down off a little bit of endorphin high. Um, so, YouTube is a little weird about showing full auto stuff. So I can't actually show it here. However, if you really want to see me shoot that gun, head over to my Instagram page, Acoli on the War, and you can watch me shoot it there. Now, back to what I was saying. Americans, they hate this. They hate this European paddle release stuff. We don't like weird stuff like this. Personally, it doesn't really bother me. However, I'm not gonna lie, I do, when I'm shooting, I do kind of have to adjust my grip a little bit to get there. Or if I really wanted to, I could use my say hello finger and uh, drop it down this way as well. Um, so it, it just kind of, how good you are with doing something a little bit different kind of will dictate whether or not you really like this or you don't like it. I personally, it doesn't really bother me too much because I'm used to flipping my gun to drop the mag anyway because I got, you know, smallish hands. But let's just shut up and shoot this thing because it's the way this gun shoots. It really intrigues me. See, it's, it's the trigger is interesting. So it's so far back. Like you, you get here, watch, we'll do a left-handed. Even, even in a, the, the single action, you get all the way, that's right there. That's, that's where it is. And then when you finally pull it, that's where it breaks. So it has a long trigger travel. And then if I were to decock it, it's even longer. So you get here, back, 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 back. Now I will say this though. That double action trigger pull is smooth. <laughs> it's really, really smooth. And what I figured out is once I got used to how far the trigger pull is, it actually, I can run this gun really fast because the one thing about this gun is the trigger reset is short as hell. 
Like, you can run it. You can run this gun once you understand where that trigger actually breaks. So, you got that long take up, you got that back wall here, but watch, watch the reset. Watch. So that's me firing it, now watch the reset. Right there. That's freaking nuts, look. It literally resets. Well, I'm not a bullet, but I got another man. Watch, it literally resets immediately. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> what the hell? Like it, look at this. So running the gun fast isn't about how fast you can move your trigger finger. It's about literally how short you can move your finger distance wise fast. Whatever the hell that means. So this gun actually was designed for military and police. And the AS stands for anti structure <laughs> the AS stands for anti-stress and by anti-stress what it was was the, the double action single was designed to make it so that under stress when they're firing um, the cop doesn't unintentionally break the shot which is essentially what a double action is supposed to do and then after they're done shooting if they still have rounds and it's in single action mode you can push it to cocker and now it's back in now it's back in double action and then you can reholster or do whatever you need to do with it people aren't really running double action single action guns like that anymore because there's this thing called gun safety and understanding how to use your firearm and you know training and so forth and so on however back in the 90s that was a pretty prevalent thought process was having a long heavy trigger will make a gun safer from the standpoint of not unintentionally breaking a shot under stress, which technically makes perfect sense. However, there's some drawbacks that come with that in that when your trigger pull is too long, now you're throwing shots if you're not training to that double action because then immediately afterwards, you get this really short trigger. So it just kind of depends. Some people really love it. Most people don't care for it too much. Um, I usually run a double action single if I'm not putting the gun in a holster or if I'm like carrying it in a bag or something like that, that's when I'll run double action, double, double action single. Like I said, this is the final edition. After this, can't get the gun anymore as far as on the new market, um, as far as it being made new. And so you get this kind of like doo-doo brown, olive drab, or whatever color you want to call this, uh, this two-tone deal here with the little black piece in the back. It does come with changeable back straps that you can change the size on a gun. If you just showed me this, this portion of the gun to me looks kind of like a toy. It just does. Uh, but I think it still looks good. I, I, I like the way this gun looks. I think proportionately, I think it's a very handsome gun. Uh, and I think it's a very timely, timeless gun. I think in the year 3054, we'll still look at this gun and it won't look old. It won't look old at all. It's just one of those guns that just has, it's found the fountain of youth, so to speak, when it comes to aesthetics. Maybe they should take this and turn it into a lotion and then all of those women paying $675,000 for some aging cream. Wow, I really ran with that one. Okay, so, but another thing about it is you get 15 rounds and what is relatively a small package, it's about, I'd say a little bit smaller than a Glock 19. Um, and then the gun recoils, let's see. It really doesn't. I don't notice the recoil. I, I just don't. It's one of those guns where it's not like, oh my God, this is the most lightest recoiling gun in the world. However, I don't notice the recoil at all. So I don't really know what to make of that because I enjoy shooting the gun. It's really what it is, it's this trigger, man. The reset on this is incredible. This is nuts how this trigger resets. This is probably the best resetting trigger on a polymer frame gun I've ever, ever encountered. I'm gonna be honest. It is the cleanest, the shortest. It's, which is weird because the take up is incredibly long at the same time, but it's neither here nor there. And then for my ability to shoot it accurately, like, uh, I mean, I'm tagging, I'm tagging this little tiny piece of steel at the top and my ability to deal with the ergonomics on the grip. The grip is incredibly ergonomic. I think this, these little kind of bumpy deals here are kind of a joke from a traction standpoint. But like I said, it came out in the 90s, give it a break. By and large, man, this gun is...
it's everything I'd expected it to be, honestly. I mean, the trigger is really smooth. The ergonomics are really great. It's a really good looking gun. Um, the magazine release can be a little wonky depending who you are. If you're American or like a true American or like a really, really American. I don't really know the difference or the distinction, so don't ask me. But by and large, I mean, the, 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 uh, the, <laughs> the sights are decently good. There's a lot of play in between. Um, that's a little annoying, but by and large, I really, really like this gun. I really, 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 really do. And I'm glad that the, the trigger guard here is more square than it's round. I'm not a fan of round trigger guards. I don't know why they keep putting that on guns. Whatever. But. I'm just gonna end it on that note. You can't stop that. So this is the Walther P99AS, chambered in nine millimeter. Do it again. Do the do the thing. Do it. Yeah. You know, we talk a lot about empowerment in this country, except for when it comes to the Second Amendment. However, I can't think of anything more empowering than having the most effective tool to protect you and your family. So help me spread this message by liking and sharing this video with everyone you know. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment because the Second Amendment, when it said militia, it wasn't talking about the government. It was talking about you. Also, if you want to know where to find the I'm the Militia shirt and merchandise, click the I'm the Militia link in the description section of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, make sure you hit that bell symbol.